Hello. I just wanted to wish everyone um, a very Merry Christmas and thank you for your support since I've been online on YouTube in September. I've been overwhelmed um, getting lots of lovely messages that we are helping you and that's the name of the game. So I would like to read a slightly different Christmas message out this year. I was running a, um, a group around Samhain, Halloween, and we were picture reading for people's relatives in the group. And I have this very old um, photo album full of my mother's family photos. There is my mother, my grandfather, who was a priest, and my grandma, Olive, the Italian, and that's my grandfather. I would think at around the 50s or 60s. Now, my grandfather was um, quite an unusual priest. He said what he meant. He didn't mince his words. Here's a picture of him going around the local village collecting the milk, probably in the war or just after the war. And he was ordained in 1924. And as I was looking at this book, this folded piece of paper slipped out in the circle. And we opened it very old typed i think this is actually a reproduction it says of the original letter and it's headed christmas eve in the place of the nativity and it starts just before christmas 1925 i had been posted to jerusalem so naturally I decided to spend the evening in the one place where before all others I should imagine that every Catholic desires to spend the anniversary of his Lord's Nativity. My chum, brackets, a Catholic theological student, close brackets, and I commenced our devotions by attending the saying of evening song at the Anglican Cathedral. Then, as we decided to do as Our Lady and St. Joseph did, most probably on the first Christmas Eve, we set out to walk to Bethlehem. It was a beautiful moonlit night, and but for the numerous cars, would have been very peaceful. We reached Jerusalem at about nine o'clock, in time to join a mixed English choir singing carols in the courtyard of the Church of the Nativity. Awful though my own voice is, I should have found it impossible not to join in. It was really wonderful. I found myself wishing that a Welsh choir could sing there. He was Welsh, I might add, and an Anglo-Catholic. Then, after the carols, which were closed with a reading of scripture and the benediction in Greek by the Greek Orthodox Archbishop of Bethlehem, we entered the church for private devotions. About half past eleven, we obtained some refreshment and returned to the church and down to the manger itself, which is in a cave, contained in the crypt faced by a small altar. It is a natural cave and the manger is cut from the rock and is held to be authentic by nearly all archaeologists. The original stone of the manger is covered with marble because the vandalism of souvenir hunters would soon reduce the rock itself to chips. But one is able to venerate the manger. 
When we arrived, a large crowd of religious and laity were waiting in the crypt. Fortunately, we were able to get a very near place to the manger and stand there. Near to 12 o'clock, a Franciscan father, attended by two lay brothers, started to say mass at the altar opposite the manger. It was really wonderful to be there to greet our Lord's arrival on his altar on the anniversary at the same time and in the same place in which his nativity took place. Naturally, one remembered in prayer those of one's friends who were not so fortunate as to be able to come. It hurt rather a lot by the obscure antic tactics of the Latin church we are debarred from receiving the Blessed Sacrament at such time. Crowds of religious and laity keep streaming down to make their communion and had I been fasting for the usual time I should have been greatly moved knowing full well that I am a Catholic in mind and heart to go forward and make my communion. Father Steer, the Anglican chaplain, had tried to arrange an Anglican midnight mass, but his beatitude, Demonus, Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem, was, I think, afraid of interfering and ruining the status quo. I was particularly particularly sorry, more so because Father Steer had told me that I might serve at it if it was arranged. After the Mass had ended at the altar of the manger, we went up into the church. Other Masses were being said at the manger altar all through the night. Indeed, I believe that about at least 150 Masses were celebrated in the Church of the Nativity from midnight onwards. Sometime before 12, a Pontifical High Mass preceded by solemn Vespers, Matins and... I can't read that word, it's faded, and something had started in the Latin church, which is on the left of and parallel to the Orthodox church and under the same roof. This lasted until about 2.30 a.m. About two o'clock a long procession came out of the Latin church and proceeded to the entrance of the crypt. And then the bishop, an Englishman named Keane, who had pontificated, carrying a waxen image of the Holy Child in a cradle, descended to the manger and deposited the image there. After much ritual, some of which I managed to see and most of which appeared to me pointless and meaningless, they returned to their high altar and finished the high mass and immediately the bishop attended by two or three priests and three or four lay servers said his own mass. All the while in the main body of the church the Greek monks were reciting in sonorous and wonderful tones their nightly office which commences just after midnight and ends at about 3 a.m and in the course of which the priest senses the holy places. About three o'clock my chum and I went into the Latin church to keep vigil before the Blessed Sacrament, but as I had been on guard the night before, and as devotion was difficult with the number of people moving about, I found that I was almost dropping off to sleep so I had to come away. I snatched three hours sleep in camp 
and made my communion at the nine o'clock in the Anglican Cathedral where the Mass was said according to the American Rite, which is an improvement on the Prayer Book 1. It is naturally the most wonderful Christmas that I have ever spent and one for which I can thank God heartily. Its memory will remain for always. Beal, that's my grandfather's signature. And that was him posted out to Jerusalem around that time. So, I've read this out to you now and you can see how busy the Holy Land is at this time because every denomination would like to celebrate Mass in their own way. And really, there should never have been a split in the Catholic Church. It was thanks to old Henry VIII who wanted to divorce that it happened. Now, I know many of you know that I'm a Druid, but I'm also a Christian as well. So you can be both together. You just take the bits that you like from each and mix and match. So I will be remembering my family and the Christ child and the birth and the multitudes of angels who sang over Christmas Eve. It's not all about the presents for me. And I really wanted to remember my family at this time, those who have gone before me, who I never knew, and those who I know, who I now miss. And I wanted to say to you, speak to these people, find out the stories, find out what life was like, because this little letter has been an invaluable... Sorry, I didn't get that. Please try again. This little... That's Alexa kicking off. This little, this little letter is such a valuable insight into the past. So have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you all after Christmas and in 2020. And I call out peace to the north, peace to the east peace to the south and peace to the west as us druids do and may peace reign around the world blessings to you and your family bye bye